the trendy new way to do it, but what works? How does it all make sense? And what sort of shape is the publishing industry actually in? Well, Anne Jones and Robert White know a thing or five about this because uh, you actually run a small Brisbane-based publishing startup called H-A-R-P-O. Is that right? Correct. Do I say all of the individual letters? No. no. It's, okay. It's Harper it Publishing. It is Harper. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is an. an um, uh, it stands for How About Resisting Powerful Organisations, and uh, yeah, I know. It came out of the seventies. It was a student um, organisation that used to run happenings, and uh, uh, one of our authors was involved in it, and uh, we liked the idea, so uh, we uh, resurrected the name. It's all way far out and groovy. I'm loving it. It's extremely groovy, and uh, uh, it's very small, but uh, we have published two books uh, to date and uh, our idea is to publish books about Brisbane Yes, and uh, in oh. particular oh. Rob's waving, Robert's them. waving the books around. <laughs> they look lovely, Rob. Thank you for the visual aid for everyone listening at home. A couple of books there with front covers, yes. And so you've published a couple to date. That's right, and we've got another two uh, in June that we're hoping to publish uh, as well. Well, this is very exciting for a number of reasons. One, because it's a startup. Two, because it's Queensland-based. And three, because you hear a lot of bad news about old-fashioned industries and publishing is one of the oldest. So what are things like at the moment, Robert, as a publisher? It has to be different than it used to be. and It's certainly not a, a worldwide thing. And we're taking advantage of Brisbane uh, and write books about Brisbane, books featuring Brisbane, and so and particularly Brisbane noir, which is kind of thrillers set in Brisbane. So if it's not a thriller, uh, it should be uh, something significantly culturally interesting about Brisbane. Okay. So, for example... Um, the go-betweens, the feel of the go-betweens when they brought the streets of our town to the world and uh, made something that we were very familiar with uh, world famous. That's kind of what we're trying to do. All right. How did you get into this business, guys? Well, actually, uh, in the 70s and early 80s, uh, we were involved in a, uh, a magazine called The Cane Toad Times. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I, I know. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that uh, that led us to doing some theatre productions, and we started a company called Toad Show, which has been you know, going for the last thirty odd years. And uh, middle of last year, we decided we'd uh, retire, uh, but we thought a retirement project. Let's publish a few books. Uh, we were working on um, a book at the time called Eccentric Voices, and uh, that was uh, along with the novel where Angel Fears to Tread. They became our first two. So two books, one's a Brisbane noir novel, the other one's a cultural history uh, of the period 65 to 95. So that's that's how we sort of thought we'd, you know, fill in our, our, uh, our later years uh, doing doing a few um, public publication projects. Fantastic. And look, we'll take some calls in a moment if you've got a question about publishing or a story that you'd like to share, especially if it just so happens to be a Brisbane noir story, why not pitch it to a couple of people who run a publishing? company who could be interested in your story one 612 you're on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland I'm Kat Anne and Robert with you as well from Harpo the Brisbane based book publishing company now what is involved in actually publishing a book we all kind of get what the author's job is but what is the role of a publisher well it can be organizing editing and uh, getting all that done, but basically, it's uh, it, it's taking a manuscript and developing it so that it can have an ISBN and international standard book number. That's like the most important thing you can think that uh, a publisher needs to do, and and then actually put it out there. So it's it's a commercial venture. It's basically taking one manuscript copy, turning it into maybe 800 or 8,000 or 8 million uh, books or 8 million e-books and, uh, making, and giving uh, people access to it. Okay. Now, I'm glad you mentioned e-books because what we have seen is the rise of the self-published e-book and there have been some very successful examples of that. But you also make the point that self-publishing isn't anything new. 
What do we need to know about self-publishing? Well, uh, you can go back to Jane Austen. Uh, five out of her six major novels were essentially self-published. The, the way the system worked there, it was done on commission and uh, she had to stump up the money to have her books published. Uh, and so the main two things a publisher would do at the time was print it and distribute it and uh, she just gained popularity because she got some good reviews and uh, so she became more, almost an underground author and it really wasn't until the 30s when her nephew wrote a book about her that her popularity really began to, to you know, come to the fore. And, of course, she'd been dead for 20 years or so by then. So, Bother. You know, yeah. <laughs> I have a confession to make. I, I asked Lord Google, oh, yes. actually, about this. Oh, the great all-knowing Lord Google. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Lord Google said that Wayne Dyer originally self-published his self-health book, Your Erroneous Zones, with a print run of 4,500 copies, and it's since sold over 35 million. Wow. Yeah. Mm, okay. Pretty good. So not bad. There are opportunities out there for self pop. So this is an option that you can take. Uh, and the barriers to that kind of uh, situation in these days are, are very, very low. Well, the big thing that you have to be good at is promoting yourself. Right. So uh, really, you've got to get uh, you get got to get yourself noticed in the media, and and that's quite hard. I mean, we're finding it really quite a a difficult uh, thing to do because mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the mainstream media don't do that many book reviews anymore. It's really hard to get reviews. Uh, you've got to use your social media, you, but you've got to do things like come and talk to to Cal to book radio. club. Yes. <laughs> And this is Book Club on ABC Radio. Brisbane and Queensland, if you weren't a member of a book club, you are now. And we have Book Club every Monday. Uh, we are in the middle of working through Trent Dalton's new book. That's our assigned reading for the month. Uh, and, of course, we'll be reviewing Boy Swallows Universe uh, in a couple of weeks. But until then, we are talking about all manner of things related to books. And today's discussion is about publishing. Uh, 1300 222 is the phone number. Anne Jones and Robert White with you from Harpo Publishing. Anne in Tarragindi. Now, Anne, you have a manuscript. I is it do. is it a Brisbane Noir manuscript, Anne? Uh, no, oh. sadly. Could it be? Because you never know. You could get picked up right now. I wish. <laughs> I <no> wish. <laughs> What's your book about, Anne? Uh, so I'm a psychologist and the book is about the life of a woman who was um, an orphan in Neocol, the, the orphanage, St. Joseph's Orphanage in Neocol. So oh, wow. It's really the story of her life and, you know, it's a difficult topic because it's the subject of trauma. Mm, mm. So I narrate it and, and she, she tells me her story. And so what stage are you at with the whole... Um, sort of manuscript, is it, it's completed, you've finished it? Um, it? Well, I thought I'd finished it and oh. then she actually went through a legal process so it was silenced for a while so right. the legal process has just finished. Okay. So now I have to go back and do some amendments. It's been professionally edited mm -hmm. but I have submitted it to some publishers and sadly been rejected. Oh. <laughs> Agonisingly. Yeah. Yeah. So now I am thinking about going down the self-publishing line. Okay. All right. So as you've heard from our experts this afternoon, you've got to be able to do some self-promotion. Now, you're not doing too badly seeing as you're already on statewide radio, <laughs> so that's one box ticked. Yep. Um, but what are you doing? I mean, are you looking at blogs? Are you going to writer's courses? I'm just curious, Anne, in your position, what is your approach? How are you thinking you'll go about getting self-published or being um, self-published? Well, there are some self-publishing organisations in Brisbane, which I did have contact with before we had this hiatus where I couldn't publish. So I guess I'll go back and talk to them. But like, I also know people that have been published traditionally and had very small sales on similar kinds of topics. Mm. So I think it is about going around and talking to book clubs, doing the social media. Um, yeah, I, I did start a blog that was kind of related to that topic and then, you know, because I was silenced, I couldn't really write for a while and... Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting, Anne. So I might just come to you, Anne, uh, because you were nodding listening to what our Anne of Tarragindi was saying. Um, what is it that was really striking a chord with you there? Well, uh, 
Uh, just to say that, uh, it, you know, it's a tough uh, road to publish things, especially in in what's a niche publishing uh, area. So mm. I guess my advice to Anne would be to think about who the audience is for mm. this book. And, uh, and from there, you might uh, say, make contact with the professional organisation, which Anne may already be a member of. And there may be things like conferences that she could set up a stall outside and, and sell books books because uh, it really is, it's not just getting on, you know, book club. It, it's actually sort of going to um, to give talks and things like that because uh, my my uh, partner here, Robert White, uh, published in 2017 A Field Guide to Spiders of Australia. Hey. Yeah. Because he's wearing a great shirt without any <laughs> spiders. I don't think any spiders, but certainly lots of insects on your shirt today. Yeah, well, that's because of Kelly Higgins Devine. She's absolutely petrified of. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> popping by Kel's desk later, I see. Yeah, so publish this niche book. That's right. And um, the, the first thing we did was the, the day we got the books, we went out and talked to a bush care group and we sold 35 copies on oh, the spot. There you go. And uh, so we, we went around and made it known with uh, people who are interested in nature. Uh, we would go on community uh, bug hunts. We're going on one in a couple of weeks called the Kalula Bio Blitz, and uh, we'll have copies of the book available for people to buy. And and you've got to be sort of proactive in that way uh, because even the self-publishing organisations are pretty wary of books where they think the audience for them is very small and they don't themselves know how to access it. You I know, see. Because books that are popular culture books in some ways are easier to deal with, whereas something, uh, a story such as Anne describes, although in, in this day and age, obviously, there's interest in those sorts of issues. It's still finding the, the audience, the people that want to pay money to buy that book. That's it, pay the money. That's right. And uh, and it, it it is all about how many books you, you print, and it is better to print a small number and you know you're going to be able to sell, you know, 100 or 200. Even if the result is ultimately going to be a uh, an e-book, having actual physical books is really fantastic. You could just think of it as marketing maybe and then have your events and work with a bookshop, work with three or four bookshops if you can. We've had a fantastic relationship with Avid Reader in Brisbane. Uh, they did the launches for us and then we've also had uh, books on stones over in uh, uh, Woolloongabba. It's I think you've got to have an X factor. You've got to have a reason for people to actually get interested in it. Mm. And ours is that it's local and we're, we're in, encouraging people to grow the culture of Brisbane because there really is a cultural cringe. I mean, you know, Sydney, Melbourne. <laughs> <sighs> Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. And to all our former Sydney and Melbourne listeners, with love. We say that, with love. Um, Suzanne in Harvey Bay. Now, Suzanne, good afternoon. Have you a story that you would like to share? Uh, yes, I've got a book. It's, uh, it's, about, it's a children's story book with, uh, with pictures. And I'm, at the moment, um, I'm uh waiting i've got to, i've got to get a front cover for it and then i'm ready to go because it's, it's been edited already oh wow yeah a lady um so i belong to a book club at that runs for my church um it's a creative um writing group and um we we write stories and we share our stories and because they're just short stories that we that we write uh the man who runs it he gives us a uh a, a little title and then we just go home and we write a story about that that topic. And then we just um, go, we meet every fortnight and we just share our stories. That's how I started. Oh, um, great. Yeah, I, I um, told them about my storybook that I've been wanting to get published for ages. And because I just started writing the stories for my boys. Yes. And they just love the stories. And I've got some pictures to go with the, the stories. And I'm just wait, just just waiting to find someone who will publish it for me, or okay. or could publish it myself. 
Yeah. Okay, Suzanne in Harvey Bay, uh, you have some thoughts, Robert White? Yeah, I mean, it's a great uh, audience. They keep on popping out, you know, yeah. children. It's a huge audience. <laughs> it's actually, a growing market, really, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> uh, and yeah. actually, it's one of the few markets where actual physical books still rule, mm. you know, because they're, um, the kids can be very young and they can really enjoy uh, the books, uh, some amazing children's books. So that's a good market to be in, uh, you know, that generally if it's going to catch on, it will uh, really take off. Okay, yeah. And just one thing also about self-publishing children's books is that they're actually usually quite short and small-ish. Mm. So, you know, you publish a book that might be, say, 48 pages. It's way cheaper than uh, doing something 248 pages. Yes. It, and uh, also because of the, the small, uh, the few number of pages, uh, you can do relatively small print runs and, and uh, instead of getting them bound with uh, traditional binding, you can have staples bound and, and all the rest of it. So it makes it a quite a, an economical thing to do if you want to do it yourself. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go, Suzanne. Good luck with the book. Uh, maybe self-publishing an option if you have no luck with uh, children's book authors in Australia. We'll just keep moving because there are a few people who want to join in the conversation this afternoon. It is half past two. You're on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland. I'm Kat. You're with Anne and Robert. They are publishers. We're talking about publishing in book club, The Savvy. Gillian in Mount Omni. G'day. Hi, Catherine. Um, I'm just really impressed with Robert and Anne and your former caller, Anne. Um, all that, so many positive um, points. Now, bear with me, Kath. I, I have a... Um, uh, sorry, a yacht please, up, Kat. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I have a degenerative um, order um, illness that I'm dealing with, um, so I can't walk anymore and I can't do things that I used to be able to do, but my brain still works even though my tongue is slowing down. So the first thing I did when I couldn't continue in the workforce was write a book and it took a year and a half and while I was writing it, you know, sometimes when, you know, in days when I was dead bound, I might even be watching Doc Phil show or something mm. embarrassing. And I'd say a show based on a book, and I'd say, okay. And that, so I ended up with a table of um, books to read. Um, it might be listening to Richard Feidler or Sarah Conversations, and then you'd download the book or you'd buy the book and then read it and say, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, personally, and you'd look up who's the publisher. So I ended up shortlisting my potential publishers in my particular genre um, to about five or six. Mm -hmm. And um, I got two offers and um, nothing back from the rest. Um, so if that, I, I guess there's... Two big, well, there are a million lessons that, that, you know, that were in my radio. So I'll say the first big lesson is it's hard work. Yeah. You know, writing 200 and, in my case, um, 68 pages and having it published um, in the area that I was published in, it's, it's hard, hard work um, because you have to self-edit, you know, mm. seven or ten times before you get out. The second message I'd like to share is don't do it for money. Right. And that's um, something that Robert and, Robert and Anne have both also alluded to. There has to be a bigger cause. If I, 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 my books um, are a memoir based on the lessons that my autistic son who died in my house fire in 2015 when he was 11, but how many lessons he taught me. And so my book is a book of encouragement that even if everything goes wrong, you can still keep going. Um, and so that, you know, it was 100% focused on encouraging um, people who were single parents or had, had autism or whatever. And so, yeah, that was what kept me going. Oh, Gillian. Wow. What a story. 
And I'm so glad you called to share that with us this afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you for having these wonderful guests on, Kat. Oh, good, good. Well, I'm glad you called, and keep in touch, because it certainly sounds like you do have a very special story to share. Gillian, thank you, of Mount Omni. Uh, you're on ABC Radio, Brisbane and Queensland. It's about 25 minutes to three. We're just talking about publishing and you heard some insight from, from Gillian there about how to come up with a short list, make a targeted approach, that it is challenging. It can be rewarding, not always financially rewarding. And that's probably a good point that Gillian has raised, the savvy. But, uh, you know, if they're not doing it for the money, do it for the love. Well, that's right. Uh, really, if you want to make a career out of it, uh, you need to start very young, and uh, you, you do. <laughs> There's not that many uh, who uh, really start out older. But the other thing um, is if you want to be published by the big publishing houses, you basically have to go out and get an agent to start. So it's really difficult for uh, writers to pub um contact publishing companies direct and they get a lot of rejects and of course the famous one is the original Harry Potter book I think JK oh, was rejected was it 17 that? times I think it was it was, <laughs> it, was a, it was a big number wow you'd be kicking yourself <laughs> oh man imagine being the person who rejected JK Rowling well lots of people Ow. did and, oh. and if I recall the story and I, I, I'd be happy to be corrected by your <laughs> listeners I think it was someone on the administrative staff who actually picked it out of a pile and read it and, and took it back to one of the uh, publishers and said this is actually, actually good we need to have a look at it this again book. an yeah. admin assistant who took it home and read it and yeah. then come back and demanded of her boss to actually publish this thing extraordinary yeah. doesn't that just to show you so many things. Uh, Anne Jones with you, Robert White as well. They are Brisbane-based publishers. You're on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland. This is Book Club. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I think we can take Joy of Townsville's call. Good day, Joy. Hello. I just um, want some guidance about how to to write and and I and eventually like to publish a book. Okay. I've got a, I've got quite a history. <laughs> yeah, okay, Joy. So how do you actually go about even just beginning to write that book? First step, yes. that's what you're curious. Yes. Okay, well, we have a published author and publisher in studio, Robert. How did you get started with your book about um, spiders, for example? What do you do? That was accidental, entirely okay. accidental. It was a gap in the market, and that's probably something that people should think about. I mean, you know, spiders, everybody hates them. There wasn't a good book about spiders. I was doing habitat restoration and taking photos of them, and no one could identify them for me, so I thought, well, obviously there needs to be a book. Yeah. And I was a writer, so I got befriended by my mentor, Dr. Robert Raven, and he really helped amazingly so I was just lucky it was something that uh, was interesting to me it was science and I just uh, uh, carried it from there but uh, in in relation to ha advice on how to write I would say that uh, you look at the great stylists of the English language uh, Raymond Chandler is my favorite okay uh, and uh, if I find a manuscript to be pretentious or um, or not or unclear, uh, it really I, I would say no to it. But if it's uh, down to earth, uh, has humour, uh, violence. I love violence. Right. <laughs> uh, well, we call it action. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and uh, and plot. Uh, then I think you're on the track. Okay. Some things to consider, Joy, when you sit down to write your story, which sounds like quite a story. We'll have to find out what that story is, hopefully, as a published author. And any advice for, for Joy, who's got a good yarn to tell and wants to know how to start telling it? Well, uh, obviously, you need to sort of gather the equipment around you. Yes. And uh, if it's something that is your life story or something like that, it's surprising how much research you have to do because you've got to get, line up all those dates and, uh, you know, know when family members were born and all the rest of it. If it's a story about, say, Townsville, for example, you know, Townsville, town, towns and ville, it's 
town twice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I believe it's named after a person. Right. <laughs> but, you know, like the history of Townsville, you kind of got to like Be assemble. Yeah, you got to do yeah. your research. You've also got to have you know, a computer with uh, appropriate uh, software, you got to sit down and make a big list, chapter headings and all the rest of it. You know, start with your dot points and then start filling in the dot points after that. And, I mean, Rob's right. Reading is really critical. All the best authors really read a lot. And so go read some books and find a book that you think is just terrific in, in a similar vein to the, the one you've, you want to write and go, well, what have they done right? You know, what do I like about this book? Uh, and, and so forth. So the other thing I think um, is uh, it's really good to have uh, visual aids as well because, you know, if you've got pictures of, of people or places that you want to describe, it really helps you to... Uh, oh, that's a good idea. To Yeah, yeah. To, to look at the and see what it was like if it's about the past, you know, what were people wearing, you know, what what makes a, a different time and place come alive and often it's, it's beautiful. A good book is a movie in your head. It is, yeah. Okay. That's right. Well, yeah. That's a lovely way of thinking about it. Joy, good luck with the book writing. And uh, to both of our very interesting book club members this afternoon, a big thank you, Anne Jones and Robert White, who are publishers in Brisbane. Of course, you can get in touch with them directly. Are you accepting pitches for Brisbane-based noir stories at the moment? We yeah, are. Sure. Okay. Head but, to the website. Yep. Okay, head to the. You heard it here. If you've got a good story about Brisbane and it's a little edgy, a little dark, a little mysterious, why not get in touch with the good people at Harpo? You're on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland. Thanks, guys. This has been Thank Book you. Club. Thank you. Nice description. Hey. You're with Cat Feeney on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland.